Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from a lovely Westlake Village, California. And here I'm going to talk today about Bitcoin technical analysis, some of the market trends, and more broadly, what macro events could affect Bitcoin on a long-term basis um, as we kind of trudge the road to happy destiny back, not back, but to our target for, you know, around August to September of 2025 of 180,000, um, which despite some of the bears out there, I do, um, and despite a, you know, potential 20, 30% correction before the halving or after the halving, I still think the long-term macro view is in place. And we'll look at some of the underlying market dynamics for Bitcoin, kind of a broad Bitcoin landscape and we'll take a look at some of the altcoins and try to determine if it's time to cut some positions and buy lower or should we hold on or should we buy more right now and i'm going to show you a trade that i just took on an altcoin uh, that i think you should definitely take a look at right now as it is pretty much the strongest altcoin in the market right now all right so starting it off with bitcoin in the in the nice little flying pennant here and uh shout out to mr dupes on this kind of analysis um who kyle dupes was saying look if we make a higher high and then a lower high back into the range that'll look like a wife cough distribution pattern and and probably going to make our way down to kind of our uh perspective downside target that we've been talking about is hey you know if we are going to get a retracement uh, for Bitcoin, it'll happen somewhere between the 0.5 and the 618. Or you could look at this little cluster area for support. Um, and from where we're at today, that would be a nice little 24% uh, nosedive. And if we took it from the higher level, that would be uh 30% correction so definitely still in the cards and um as uh plan b his uh his model that uh is famously known for calling kind of the bull macro cycles um just printed the second red dot which is bull market time every time we've got the second dot i mean the market has just flown to the moon we just got our second dot and um i think kind of his comment here is don't let these little dips distract you bitcoin is still in a bull market mode red dot red dot right so um that's something to consider and we're going to look at some of the liquidation levels which uh this kind of just tipped me off for the trade that i just took which was look there is a nice little heat map up here at about 72,000, 72,350. If they are gonna send it lower, um, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised for them to throw it up there to that 72,350 area, 72,400, and then come back and get that liquidity down here. Um, right now, you can see that people are, were net short, uh, you know, barring just a few hours ago, uh, and now you can see the longs are building up here. And so a bit of a short squeeze there. And they're going to come for these bubbles up here at at least 71,000. And if Bitcoin is going to get a little rise, well, I'd expect some of the altcoins to follow suit with it. Um, and just kind of re <clears throat> re analyzing this, this bull pennant or whatever you want to call it, a... Um, horizontal triangle uh the measure move on that's at 81,550 so if we do break out um that could be a potential target as well um but we do want to be absolutely aware of um is if we put in another lower high so this would be the first lower high on the daily we are still getting higher lows, so that's okay. But if we get a rejection right here 
you know, at about 69,000 or 72, or sorry, 71.5, probably another good indicator uh, that, you know, things are gonna come down a little bit lower. And that's okay. We could be stuck in a bit of a range for some time. You know, Bitcoin just can't go straight up forever. It's gotta have some sideways consolidation. Um, this is a bullish formation, so, you know, Another way to look at this is a breakdown to the downside would take you right to that 0.5, which wouldn't be out of the question. Um, also noting today, if um, I can put my regular chart back up, I hate to do it because I have a bit of a trade setup uh, brewing here. So I'm just gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna bring up another chart here. Um, as the RSI is a rather powerful indicator, the RSI is this guy right here. And I want to take a look at the daily time frame. And you can see coming back from this low right here, you've got several higher lows. I would call it two drives. Two drives typically gives you a shot to the top side of the range, which is that $72,000 pivot. So that, that, and then if we can get one more higher low after that, um, then you'd be looking at the 1618 target, which is going to come in uh, from this high to low, sitting there at about $80,000. So just a few ways to look at the market right now. Momentum is to the downside and will cross up today. If we close anywhere above 70,145, that would definitely look good for bulls. Um, the only thing that I don't love about, you know, the volatility uh, read right here on the BBWP is that it's declining. So um, the most powerful moves come from when volatility is low, uh, specifically below the 20 read. Um, and when you get expansion from a low level, so could we come down for a few more days, uh, maybe the rest of the month, you know, we got the having coming up. When is the Bitcoin having coming? Bitcoin having countdown. I think they said it's coming somewhere right around 420, which could be good for Mr. Doggy coin, Mr. Elon Musk's coin. So that Having is coming up here in about 17 days and five hours. So, you know, that long term thesis is that, hey, look, here's the having schedule. And here's what typically happens. I just turned $140 into $1,300 over the last two weeks. Yes, it's possible in the land of cryptocurrency. My name is Chris Mitchell. I am the CEO of Crypt Courses, and I'm bringing you this video because I'm gonna give you some really good information on how to buy, sell, and trade digital currency. Now, you've probably heard about a lot of people making a lot of money in crypto, but you don't feel safe or intelligent enough to make the investment. That's why I created Bitcoin 101 how to stack sats using technical analysis. It's the crypto trader's dream to starting your crypto journey. It's absolutely free. All you gotta do is click on the link in the description below and we will get you your free guide today. So this, these are all the prior halvings, right? So either right before or right after the halving, you get Somewhere around a 30% correction. This was a bit of an outlier here at 60%. So that, um, you know, just reiterating, hey, the bull market starts 12 months before the halving. Then there's typically a 30% correction somewhere right around the halving. So you don't want to have lettuce fingers. You don't want to really um, uh, lose, you know, uh, sight of the prize here and give up your coins for, you know, the mean old whales that want to, you know, steal all your coins. So here would be kind of a good example of the 2016 having, right? We had the 30% dump after the having. We came all the way down to the purple 200. So that was, you know, about a month after the having, two months after. 
picked it on up and ran it pretty strong to the upside. And then we saw this one that the 30% correction before the 2012 having would have, I, I would have said this, this was the dump right here. That was 50%. So pretty significant. Um, and just reiterating, you know, we've been talking about it all year long and it, you know, I, and, and here's my overall thoughts, right? Should, should we be selling? Should we be buying? What, you know, what should we be doing? Because something different happened, right? And we made new all time highs before the having, um, I think it made sense to have some skin in the game. Um, and now it's, I think a good time to be in caution mode and to be patient and really wait for the, the correction. Cause we don't know if it's going to be right now, you know, over the next few days, or is it going to be, um, is it going to be like 30 days after the having, then we get a real serious dump, but any kind of a opportunity above the, uh, Purple 200, I would consider a, you know, major or around the purple 200 exponential, I would consider a major buying opportunity. Um, the other thing to kind of keep your eye on is this level right here at 61. Yeah, call it 61,000, call it 60,000. You know, when, if we start closing dailies below there, okay, you're probably going to have that warning sign that, hey, we're, we're going to get some follow through on that. Um, Yep. So I think that's wrapping it up for Bitcoin. I did want to check in on the uh, fear and greed. The fear and greed index and see where people are at. Are they fearful? Are they greedy right now? What are people doing? We got the fear and greed at 70. So people are still greedy. Um, typically the big dump offs are gonna be when people are very extremely greedy, right? Those are the times to sell and vice versa, uh, times to buy when people are extremely fearful. Warren Buffett's favorite old saying, and I hate to even say Warren Buffett and relate it to crypto, but you know, buy where there's blood in the streets, even if it's your own blood, that's, that is the saying to consider. Um, but once again, just keeping our eyes on Bitcoin here, if we see some kind of a deviation above the range high, and then we get kicked back into the range, anything like this, right? Even if it's, even if it's like this, oh, I'm drawing tools is not working at the moment. <clears throat> so we pop up here, make a higher high. Okay, higher low, lower high and lower low back into the range. That is your get short zone. If you ask me, um, 100% might be time to, you know, take a short position. Again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, but just giving you my thoughts on the market in general. Um, so, you know, is it worth taking a shot and owning some assets right now? Absolutely. The trend has been up. You expect the trend to be your friend till the end of the trend, right? So again, if we get a lower high again, and then a lower low, that would be a trend reversal on the daily time frame. We'd probably get, you know, 30 days of correction to the downside. And I think that's a pretty decent way to be looking at the market at the moment. Um, all right, let's go through some of the other charts. And again, once again, uh, we do have <clears throat> what I would consider one, two, three drives. That gives you a shot to the top side of the range. So I, I'm at least expecting Bitcoin to visit the top side of the range somewhere between 71.7 to 73.3. And then we judge it from there. So if a rising tide lifts all the ships, then you'd expect some of our altcoins, the stronger ones, to perform well. And the ones that I've got on my list, the number one, Solana here. Solana has just been a beast, continues to move and grow and push to the upside. So um, 
why not expect more trend continuation? This is where all the meme coins are. I don't know what happened with these labels on the side of my chart, why it's doing that. I don't know why it's doing that. Let's see. So anytime I move to an altcoin, Solana, yeah, Solana has something, something's wrong with it. Anyways, long story short, hidden bullish divergence confirmed. How many drives would we have? Would it be fair to say three? One, two, three. Yes, indeed. If we can confirm today, anywhere above 192, that's the line in the sand. Above there, good. Uh, below there, you know, still pressure onto the downside. Um, but it does look good if Bitcoin is going to complete its higher low. I'd expect Solana to do the same thing. Additionally, on the four hour time frame for Solana, do we have a W formation? Would you consider this a W? Perhaps, um, looking at the wrong chart. Let's see if it looks any better here. Nope. <sighs> Typically this side of the W you wanna see like a high volume candle. You do have three, kind of three red strikes to the uh, downside, you know, showing some capitulation or, or retailers unloading here gets bought back up by the uh, the whales and it does look like a W to me. Um, and I would kind of judge it right here on the four hour time frame. If we can close a four hour above that middle wick right there at 190, call it 191, I would be looking for a shot back to about 202. And you can see momentum has now flipped back to the upside, low volatility. And so when volatility expands, you expect the price to go in the direction of the stochastic on the four hour. As long as we were above 183 on the next four hour closure coming up in one hour and 41 minutes, I would expect some upside continuation. And for this silver cross to be a failed uh, silver cross, Otherwise, uh, you know, back below, and here's where I was looking at managing risk on this one, on the actual 30 minute time frame, you do have this silver cross that is brewing. And so that is when the 21 crosses the green 55 to the upside. That is the yellow crosses the green to the upside. On declining volatility. So maybe we come revisit the range low one more time and then pick it up off, off of that green 55. Everything's still intact as long as, well, if you're more aggressive, uh, you put your stop loss below these, this little range wicks. I'm personally uh, a little more conservative and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put mine right around here. So what does the trade setup look like? And I did just take this on Bybit. There's a link in the description below if you want to take a look so it'd be right there honestly i should put it below this this range low let it come back fill in one more time but no let's tighten it up good to protect that capital you can always get back in at a bit of a lower price and i would expect at least a test up like that um Probably just get this down a little bit lower here. Yeah, that looks good. So I will post that in the Discord if you guys want to check that out. It is in the link in the description below. All right, uh, next altcoin up. So again, this is the leader. I'm a lot more comfortable taking longs on Solana than some of the other coins right now because Solana has been proven to be the biggest beast in the market. You know, the biggest beast in the market. He continues to pump higher and higher. And additionally, you've got, you've got Pepe. Uh, Pepe has been, you know, absolutely ripping the number one meme coin probably out there. And uh, I mean, the weekly doesn't look good right now, but the week is not over. <clears throat> and the way this, um, and the way this closed here, was not was not giving me a lot of confidence here, but 
yeah, so this uh, this one to me looks like it wants to come down and, and, and fill this wick somewhere, somewhere in the middle right here. Um, this one can get violent and volatile and you do have uh, some bearish divergence playing out right there. No, no, scratch that, no bearish divergence. Is that a higher high? Yes, it is. That's higher high is coming back all the way from this point. So yeah, you do on a candle closing basis. So you see this candle, this candle, and this candle, those are all high, uh, higher highs in price. And in the RSI, oh, they're all higher highs. Never mind. My eyes are going blind here. Um, the bullish divergence would come back from that last low way back here. And you would have one to almost three if we confirm this as a higher low. So everybody's waiting on today's closure. Can we confirm a higher low and push it back to the upside? That's the question of the day. Um, yep. So moving it on here, AGI, AGIX. I know this one looks like a decent bounce play. If we were gonna bounce and get continuation, you'd expect it to happen from this zone right here um, by confirming this as a higher low. All I'd wanna see is a closure back above this pink guy at not 0.38 cents. That would look good for a perfect 236 bounce and you could expect a run back to the 618 at a minimum. Um, you also have volatility just beginning to, you know, it was declining, now it's expanding. So it's another tough call there. There's still a lot of hype around the, uh, the whole AI coin narrative. So fetch, AGIX, and what was the other one? Uh, singularity, fetch. Singularity and I forgot the other one. Um, all supposedly merging together to make one AI crypto monster. And I do think something like that could be a bit of a powerhouse. Uh, let's check out Whiff. Dog with hat. Still looking relatively strong. I mean, compared to the rest of the market, making the higher highs, attempting a higher low. All it needs to do is close above 419. Uh, and I would expect uh, one more one more run at the highs, probably one more higher high at least uh, before some kind of a correction. And remember, if Bitcoin trades sideways and Bitcoin dominance starts going down, that'll be good for our altcoins. AVEX also coming in the perfect zone. Trade setup was left in the Discord. We said it would probably be better uh, to catch it lower. But again, it was worth having a shot in there as the structure was still uh, intact back over here uh, with the higher lows. And now we kind of broke this down, long down sloping trend line. Um, let's see how far back this goes. So how would we draw that out? Something like that. From the ultimate low there. Anyways, uh, that one is still up there and still potentially, I do look at this one as just a hard one to call. If volatility was declining, but it is below 25, um, as we approach that green 55, that would be your, your kind of line in the sand. Now, I'm just waiting for closure above this level and I would say AVAX is probably good for lift off. Another one, Matic, uh, holding the downsloping trend line. It is uh, on the daily time frame. It's, it's got a trend reversal, so I'd watch out for that. Resistance coming up here at 99 cents for Mr. AVAX. Um, and if it, if it is gonna make a run at the highs, I'd be looking at you know somewhere in the, this zone for uh, it to get some sell pressure. Super, super duper. Everything making a higher low. I say new all time highs, guys. Everything's making a higher low today. Let's go for some new all time highs. Let's let's have things shape up the way they should. And also notice Solana is 
making a higher low off the 21 rather than the 55. Most of these almost made it to the 55. AGX, Whiff. Whiff looks the most bullish, uh, to be fair, so far. Um, again, kind of AVAX breaking down some structure here. But uh, this is where you'd expect those continuation drives to happen off the green 55. It's been holding it up all the way on the daily. Um, super, super still looks strong to me. Uh, it, it's super's kind of never, uh, never really failed for us um, since we started getting into this one. Super looking relatively strong here. But does need it, you know, every, everybody needs to be aware of, okay, does this happen? Do we make a higher high, higher low, lower high, lower low, something like that would be bad and likely send things down, you know, a bit lower. Thousand X when also, you know, potential, um, again, meme coin strength here, stacks. Stacks also looking relatively strong, although this does look like a perf perfect double top. So, uh, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see stacks come back down in that zone. Stacks. Hey, guys, make sure you do smash the like button if you do enjoy some of the content in the channel. Just hit the like button, sir. All right. Um, Casper, another one, um, you know, could this be the higher low? All we got to do is take out this wick in my book, real confirmation above this guy. And then I'd say you're probably going to run at this trend line right here. So Casper, huge opportunities for those who have, you know, stuck it out. Uh, gosh, is this a giant flag? Is this dry up? Is that close enough? Is close enough? No, I, I'd, I'd probably draw it like that. That's a little bit more to my liking right here. So it needs to hold this level, otherwise it's going to be in trouble. Um, neutron, Neutron, Neutron is leading the pack. The higher low looks to be in force. Getting some volume coming in on this uh, candle here. So it's turning bright green. That's what you want to see. And But it is in a nice daily downtrend. So it needs to get above 131. And then I'd be targeting that move all the way back above. Really, it's this wick. That, that wick right there at 148. And then we get a run at this trend line. And we see if it's, if it's a fake out or a breakout. Um, I think I'm going to wrap my thoughts up there, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. It was good to be back today. Um, what else did I want to look at? How about Andy on Soul? Oh, Andy, Pepe's friend, has not been too nice, but it is at the range lows. And I do kind of like this idea of if memes continue to run, well, Andy and his friend should do okay. Uh, Sui also has been very bullish. Sui, I think, is something, you know, worth taking a look at. Um, it just tagged the 1618. This one can gather strength and it has declining volatility off the green 55. That's what you want to see. That is exactly what you want to see, um, if you ask me. Um, so, Sui looking for a potential bounce here, a nice bounce and potentially a run all the way up to 329, which is the next major FIB level. And you know, it's still holding the upsloping trend line there. And so that's good as well. And last one I'm gonna do is Mr. Say, getting a bounce off its bottom side trend line. Say is also one that tends to rip pretty hard when it starts to go. All right, guys, that is it. Let's look out for these higher lows and then watch out for a deviation. And I will be back tomorrow with another one. Have yourself a blessed and highly favored day. Take care.